Hey guys, welcome back to iCode. I am Pallav and in this video, we are going to compare the performances of nil coalescing operator, the double question mark that we use for unwrapping optionals, with our own function having the code for unwrapping an optional. We will see that what is the difference in the build time and how much time does both of these take for running exact same code. The inspiration for doing this was a question that I was asked recently. So few days back, I attended an event organized by Swift Bangalore. And there I was asked that why do people use their own function instead of nil coalescing operator. While I knew that this is due to the performance implications, but never benchmarked it. So let's do it in this video. So I have done some setup for doing this benchmarking thing. And we have two files here. One is example with flat and one is the example with nil coalescing. There's another file for performance check and the one that is benchmark.sh that is the script file, the shell script that we'll be executing for comparing the performance for, for building these files. Now let's first have a look that what is there in these files, uh, exactly what we will be benchmarking. So let me just show you the example with a flat first. It is not having much, just a function named example with iflet, which is having the code for unwrapping the optional using the iflet. And then there's a loop for executing this 10,000 times. So that's for example with iflet. And now let's see that what's there in example with nil coil sing. Again, the same thing, a loop for executing this function for 10,000 times. And the only difference in the function is that instead of using iflet, we are using nil coil sing over here. So we have an optional string, which is nil. And the nil coalescing operator is unwrapping that string and returning the default value. Essentially the same thing that we did with uh, the iflet. We'll be using these for comparing the build times. And then there's another file called performance. Let's see that what's there in open performance.check. So here we have two functions for benchmarking nil coalescing and the iflet. And then there are the two functions that we saw in our other files, example with iflet and example with nil coalescing. So these benchmarking functions will be calling these functions. The start time when the execution of this function will start and the end time when this will be done. Later we will check the delta between the start time and end time. So this is for benchmarking nil coalescing and this is for benchmarking the iflet. Uh, these are the two functions and the iterations, number of iterations is 10 leg. So we'll be executing these code for 10 leg times. Let's have a look at our shell script as well. So what's there in benchmark.sh. And if you see here, there's nothing much. A function for measuring the build time. Uh, we are using swift c command for, for building the files. Then a utility function for converting the seconds to milliseconds. The, the time string that we'll be getting, we'll be converting it to milliseconds. Then there's some code for logging and for taking the average. And after that, the performance check. So that's pretty much in the script. Let's try running it now. Building example with nil coalescing. Building example with iflet. These are the build times. The average of nil coalescing is 252 milliseconds and the average of iflet is 209 milliseconds. And the performance check, so it took around 0.21 seconds for the nil coalescing and 0.20 seconds for the iflet. The iflet outperformed it when I ran this, this script earlier, the difference was around 40-45 milliseconds. The, the average time for the iflet was around 185-190 milliseconds while for nil coalescing it was around 200-205 and the runtime was again on the same lines. So now let's try to understand that what is the reason behind this. So there are chances that this behavior can change for actual project having lot of files, lot of calls to those methods. We'll talk about that in a minute. But before that, let's try to understand the reasons behind the results we saw. So to understand that why nil coalescing is taking more time, I wanted to look at its implementation. And after spending some time with the GitHub repo of Swift, I found the implementation of nil coalescing. That's the file. So there are several factors related to how these constructs are implemented and optimized by the Swift compiler. The first reason that I feel is that nil coalescing is an operator while iflet is a control flow. And what do I mean by this? So nil coalescing has an implicit branching logic under the hood. It needs to check whether the optional value is nil or not. 
and then conditionally unwrap it or use a default value. While iflet has an explicit control flow, it directly checks if the optional has a value and if yes, it proceeds with the unwrapped value. So this direct control flow can sometimes be more optimized by the compiler. Next, it could be compiler's optimization, especially with the pattern matching. So Swift compilers can optimize iflet statements more aggressively because they involve straightforward pattern matching and direct unwrapping of the optional values. This optimization might reduce the overhead compared to the more generalized approach that is needed for the nil coalescing operator. Another factor for the performance is the context and the usage pattern. Also, the nil coalescing operator is more generalized. It is applicable to any type of optional value. So this generality, this generic behavior can sometimes lead to a trade-off in the performance when compared to the constructs like iflet, which are more specialized and optimized for direct optional unwrapping scenarios. I'll mention the links of a couple of blogs in the description related to this. People have tried benchmarking these things on larger projects and the results have been quite interesting. So one of the observations was that nil coalescing is faster than our unwrap methods, our custom methods, if the usage is in very large numbers. For this, you can check these graphs mentioned in the blog post. I'll mention the links in the description. So if we do not consider the performance for a while, we cannot disagree that nil coalescing is far more convenient and concise in terms of usage. When it comes to readability part, I find it better. So if few seconds here and there are not a concern to you, you may find nil coalescing better. You can also benchmark it further and may find something interesting which I may have overlooked, I may have missed. And if you find them while benchmarking, while digging into the reasons, please share it with everyone through the comments. And if you like the content of this channel, you should consider hitting that like button and subscribe button. Feel free to share this video with your friends. See you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.